and welcome back YouTubers. I'm your host TubeBunny here finally back once again with yet another upload for y'all to enjoy. Uh, you may have noticed that I have not uploaded a lot of content over this summer and I apologize for that but hopefully uh, the next couple weeks here will make up for that. See, um, lately I found myself a few summer projects. This here, this Toshiba 52HM84 DLP Rear Projection Television is one of those projects that I got my hands on. And today I'm going to be doing a quick tour and review of that for you. And hopefully uh, in another video I will be able to do a, um, a repair guide as to what I did to get this particular set working. Alright YouTubers, today we're going to be doing something a little different. I'm going to be, um, for the first time in quite a while probably, I have taken the Canon off of the tripod and turned off the manual focus. So we're going to be at the mercy of my steady recording, I'm sorry, my unsteady recording hand and uh, the camera's autofocus. So bear with me for that. Uh, but anyway, let's get started. I got this Toshiba 52HM84 which is not unlike any of the other um, HM84 models that they produced a couple weeks ago, uh, along with a um, Mitsubishi DLP, which is over there in the other room, which is uh, actually, we're going to be doing another video on that at a later time, but I got this a couple weeks ago uh, with that other one. Uh, the person said it was broken, so I um, took them home because I figured I could probably resell them. Uh, these were sitting in the previous owner's garage, possibly on the previous owner's driveway for quite some time, and uh, we picked them up. Uh, they were reported to allegedly have brand new lamps in them. Anyway, this this model, this is the uh, HM84. These were uh, some of the earlier DLP models from, I believe these are around uh, 2004 to 2006. Um, this is a 720p model with the, for those of you who are interested, the HD2 Plus uh, DLP engine inside of them. So we're going to take a, actually let's power it up first here. It does have a um, small interesting remote. It's not the greatest thing in the world, but it does get the job done. So we'll start it up here real quick. This is a Compared to the Mitsubishi over there anyway, this is a pretty quiet model and it starts up very, very quickly as you can see. I don't know if you can see that in the camera already, but it's already um, started to create a picture on the screen and it's at full brightness in uh, next to no time. So now we're going to move the camera a little bit. This is something we don't do very often and we're going to start with an external tour here. So right up front here we've got... Uh, these are kind of interesting. They're touch sensitive buttons instead of push buttons and you just touch them instead of actually pressing them. There's a key for power to go to the menu, volume, channel, exit, and TV video. This front panel here does come off all the way. There's also a little thing in the side here where you can plug stuff to. Uh, the rest of the front, there's not a whole lot else. The screen is 52 inches diagonally, and it uh, actually has four uh, built-in speakers, surprisingly good speakers. They're supposedly 20 watts each, which is 40 watts of sound, and it, they do sound pretty good for what they are. So we're going to try and uh, take a look at the back here real quick. Anyway, this is the um, the side back here. As you can see, it's a very slim uh, set, especially compared to the uh, CRT rear projection models. There's a hole inside here for where the lamp would go. As you can see here, this is pretty cleaned up. These were um, very messy. They were an absolute disaster when I got them. Here on the left side, there's not really anything too interesting or noteworthy. Um, let's see, going here, there's a bunch of screw holes. The screen front does come off, although if you do 
venture into doing this yourself, which isn't terribly necessary unless you want to clean the lens. Um, there are some hidden screws that will prevent you from doing this. You do have to pull these two off and then uh, this back cover and there are some hidden screws behind there so that you do not break that. It is worth noting that this is not the fanciest model even for its time. There are not any um, it doesn't have a digital tuner for uh, ATSC or QAM uh, cable or over the air. There are actually a twin standard def tuners in there so you can uh, plug that up to your analog cable or whatever but it doesn't look that great unless you plug something high def up to it. As for inputs it looks like there are uh, two standard def composite inputs on the third one on the side there. There are two high def component inputs. There's also composite video out here for whatever reason. Audio in, I believe that's for the HDMI port for uh, devices that don't support audio over HDMI, such as if you used a DVI adapter from a computer or something. And then there's also one HDMI port if you are unfortunate enough to have a device that uses only HDMI. As I was saying earlier, this is a pretty quiet set. There's um, some air and light coming out of the vent back here, but you don't normally hear much of that in normal use. Back says Toshiba. And Next we're gonna fire up the Xbox and uh, see what it looks like. Now that we do have the Xbox starting here, there's a few things worth noting about this and the screen itself. Um, there is a significant amount of uh, overscan and um, geometry problems. <clears throat> Most It's all optical though, so in other words, it's not missing any pixels, it's just um, being projected somewhere other than the screen. And uh, you could kind of see that when the Xbox was starting, the bars on the side um, that it puts for the standard def startup kind of did this sort of a thing instead of being straight up and down. And uh, so it's not usually a problem you'll, walk, you'll see under normal viewing. It's just there is a lot of um, the images cut off quite a bit. Overall, it's, um, it's very well focused. It's a pretty sharp image. There is no shield of any kind um, on top of the screen, so there's... There's really nothing between the screen and flying objects or uh, little kids or animals that might decide to um, throw things at or jump into it or anything. And so if that were to break, you'd need to get a new screen more than likely. And anyway, while we're in here, let's take a look at some of the menus. Uh, we'll be navigating with the remote here. Center button is menu, and this is enter instead of the center button like you'd expect but we'll uh, navigate with that. Uh, first there's like the, um, the screen settings here. As for picture settings, this is uh, kind of interesting to note here. By default, when you um, buy it off the shelf, the contrast is jacked up to 100, which looks absolutely uh, terrible. I apologize, this is kind of hard to see on the uh, camera here. So anyway, moving along, there's also sound settings, um, a bunch of stuff in there. Usually I, d I turn off some of the novelty stuff, but I do turn the, um, I do like to uh, turn the bass up. And over here, there's the, um, the, the locale settings. For whatever reason, when you uh, disconnect the power, the clock always gets unset, so you always have to set it all over again. Um, so I'll probably take care of that later. There's also like um, sleep timers and stuff. You can change the, the labels for the inputs. Um, the background for the menus. And then it also has an interesting feature called Quick Restart. And what that does is when you turn it off, it'll leave the lamp on at a lower setting for about a minute. So if you decide that you do want to use it some more, you can turn it back on right away without um, having to warm the lamp up all over again. So that's kind of an interesting feature. And then the last thing is just the child locks and stuff. So uh, not nothing too fancy or exciting like the, like on the uh, Mitsu, but, but all in all it does look quite good even though um, these sets do have problems. This particular one has uh, quite a number of hours on it. I think the previous owner managed to put a little over 20,000 hours into this. 
Um, I don't know how many lamp replacements that took or even how many hours are actually on this lamp because the um, counter hadn't been reset so it was at 9999 by the time I got it. And this, um, the screen really does look quite good. This camera just doesn't do it that much justice. Anyway, thanks for joining us. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to pick up the pace here and get a few more videos out on the old YouTube for you guys to enjoy. I'm really sorry for the, um, for the lack of activity over this summer. I've just uh, been busy on a lot of projects, such as this one here, and uh, hopefully we'll have some more content for you. So thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.